Castlevania is a legendary horror team action adventure video game series developed and created by Konami. It centers about the Belmont family, a clan of vampire hunters, and their eternal quest on destroying the dark forces and their lord, Count Dracula. Since 1986, Castlevania has been a staple in the video game industry. So big, in fact, that even is partly responsible of creating the subgenre Metroidvania. For more than 35 years, Castlevania has been a giant, spanning all sorts of games and as of recently an animated series. As you may know, I like watching anime, but I'm also a gamer, meaning that I don't actually play games. I just watch every IGN video and review bomb anytime a glitchy game comes out. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, um, I have not played a lot of Castlevania games. Uh, just this one for the GBA, and that's when I was 10 or something. But I am aware who Simon Belmont is. Many people associate Whips as a weapon with Indiana Jones, but for me, it's the chat of chats Simon fucking Belmont, even though he suck ass in Super Smash. So hear me out when I say the Castlevania anime is fucking amazing. Released worldwide on Netflix in 2017, the Castlevania anime is a horror action adventure set in a dark fantasy medieval world based in the video games of the same name. Loosely based in Castlevania 3 and Symphony of the Night, the creators have clarified that the settings present in the animated series are separate from the games, implying that the lore, characterization and plot don't necessarily parallel the games, and they also mention that things can develop differently. And it shows. When I think about a Castlevania series, I imagine a 10 episode show about a badass vampire hunter in a miniskirt adventuring inside the gothic and dangerous castle full of monsters until he finds Dracula and saves the day. The show is clearly not that. No, it's something better. It's a full-on drama about the hate of Dracula towards humanity, and Belmont and Co. doing anything possible to stop his evil plan. Instead of just cruising Dracula's castle like nothing, the anime evolves towards something more wicked. We see destruction, death, hopelessness, the worst of humanity. Have I mentioned that this anime is inspired by Berserk? Heck, it's even a better Berserk show than Berserk itself sometimes. What I'm trying to say is that it is a dark fantasy, full of violence, loss of human lives, and fantastic monster designs. Either based on the video games or original of the show, it is a dark show. Not for anyone, but for people looking for that itch that modern anime don't really give us anymore. It's a show that while having incredible action scenes, it's mainly drove by characters interacting with each other. I swear, the show must be 20% action and 60% talking. But it's good. It really is good. The dialogue in the anime is incredible. Every character feels very human. Or at least very... vampire -y? You get my drift. There are some characters that I like and some that I absolutely love. There's only one that I dislike and it's because it's basically a silly comedy relief character. In a show that, impressively, got a lot of chuckles out of me. Honestly. It is funny sometimes. I'm told you were drinking with Belnardis and Belmont yesterday. I'm extremely famous and they wanted to meet someone who'd seen toilet paper. What the fuck is toilet paper? But getting back to the dialogue, some lines are really stuck in my head. Like, you take my wife and deny I even exist? It's just one of many that are said in a regular ass conversation in the anime. It is beyond any other show has gone. The way of expressing is unique in this anime. It gets philosophical, it gets depressing, it gets real. But when the blah 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 finishes, lips get shut and brows get frowned, the action starts and oh my god, it's mesmerizing. The way fights in the anime work, it's incredible to see in an American production. The way punches have weight on them, how the movement of the characters make it feel credible, like a kung fu movie. And that's just hand to hand combat. I swear you don't see Trevor doing the same attack twice with his whip. Every time he wills it, it is hypnotic. Seeing such a unique weapon working that way, with so many different techniques, it's a vibe. And Saifa with her magic is just badass. Saifa rocks. How does she make Ice and Fire look so cool among Trevor and Alucard is impressive on its own. The show is a clear love letter to the franchise, showing all kinds of references. Loot inside walls, platforming segments just like the games, 
the mention of the history of the Belmonts in Wallachia and their relationship with Dracula and monster hunting. The clothes Alucard used are straight up the ones from Symphony of the Night, Dracula's weak point being in the head. There's even a cute animated credit card in the end of every episode designed just like the retro games. It also expands so many aspects of the original games. Forge Masters are a minor thing in the games, but in the anime, they are essential to the plot. Carmilla is an old boss, redesigned to the anime to be a badass antagonist. The Speakers, a group of people that doesn't believe in written history, just spoken one. The extension of Wallachia, besides the castle, in its own, it is an incredible feature of the anime. By season 3, the overexpansion of the Castlevania universe gets insane, but that's a later topic. For now, understand that the anime is an incredible and faithful adaptation, even though it's loosely based on the games. It's probably the best video game adaptation in animated form ever made. This is a passion project. You watch videos about the production of the show and it's clear that it's made with heart and it's intended in their way. It is their show, and they're making history in terms of video game adaptations. Now I want to get more into why I like this series on a specific levels. So I'm going to divide the video for each season. Of course, spoilers for each season, so beware. Okay? Let's go. Starting with... Season 1 can help but feel like a pilot for the series. It's a short season with only 4 episodes, but damn it, did it leave an impression on me. It's the perfect length to get you invested in the Castlevania series, and then have you grasping for more. I remember when the anime first aired. It ended and I enveloped myself into the Castlevania wiki, reading about the lore and everything amazing in it. Castlevania might have one of the most efficient first episodes I've ever seen in recent anime. How the show doesn't really start with Belmont, but actually with the side of the story starring Dracula himself. It's a very interesting move. I know who Dracula is. He's the bad guy. There are like 50 million versions of him as the bad guy. A character so evil, not only in video games but in literature as well. A character that's up there with Ganondorf and Sephiroth to discuss who is the baddest motherfucker of them all. And incredibly, since episode 1, the anime makes me being in Dracula's side. His development from a sassy bitch, to a soul in pain, to evil reincarnated, made so much sense in the first 50 minutes of the series that made me wish for a Dracula-only show. Not this one. But of course, since this is Castlevania after all, we are introduced to Trevor, or Belmont for the series. At first, I was critical. Why didn't we have the absolute Chad that is Simon Belmont? Look, this fucker gets his ass beaten not even 5 minutes introduced. But as the episodes progressed, I felt more compassionate towards Trevor, a badass vampire hunter who everybody hated by no real reason, just for being a Belmont. Kind of whiny at first, but as much Dracula is right for his hate towards humans, Trevor is right for his disdain towards everyone who drove the Belmont to be excommunicated and dissolved, basically. When Saifa came around, they formed a badass duo, destined to kill monsters of the night. The show is brutal sometimes, with its creatures, their mythology, and their thirst for blood. It's an intense show to watch. The series is not afraid to show the ugly side of humanity, how greedy can one be, and how in our own pride we can choose the worst decision that might affect us in the future. With incredible action, great choreography, an OK soundtrack, incredible voice acting, and a final, fan service battle between Trevor and Alucard that fell straight out of the video game, the season ends with its intention to go full throttle in the next one. And it kinda does. While season 1 was the entry of this show, season 2 was supposed to be the main course, and in some instances, it accomplishes it. But in some others, it doesn't reach that goal. Don't take me wrong, season 2 is really good, but for a show that was sold as action-packed with destruction and death all around, it doesn't feel that way. The season starts great, to be real, showing the prelude to the witch hunt of Lisa, and meeting all the new characters that are overseeing the war is actually interesting. The introduction of Isaac, a very compelling antagonist, Hector, the most human character of the series, and Carmilla, the wild card of the show, the introduction of these very important characters for the narrative and even showing the aftermath of the events at Greshit 
is an organic way of progressing the story, but what happens next is what let me down a little. Nevertheless, it's interesting. The story got split into two factions, the main trio and the Dracula Court, meaning that we are not going to have the same amount of action-packed scenes as the previous season. While the heroes faced the evil hordes, the vampire side felt more like a political drama. The exchange of ideals was not a better way of developing the characters. To portraying them just as evil monsters feels lazy to me. So I'm pro of this West Wing bullshit, where the overload of dialogue from both sides gets overwhelming. The lack of destruction shown this season, in contrary to the last one, feels absurd to me. More when the war generals are saying stupid shit like, oh, our war is going great, or we are winning, for now. Bro, don't tell me, show me. There's so much dialogue in this season. We see the main heroes facing the Night Hordes just two times before heading into the castle. Other than that, it's an incredible experience. The world building, the vampire mythos, technical terms like death by running water, distance mirrors, Aramic languages, it's incredible. The absolute terror that vampires materialize to simple humans is palpable. When there is violence, it's brutal. The history of the Belmonts, their keep, the mention of Leon Belmont, I really want to see their peak when they were an honorable family of vampire hunters. And Carmilla. Carmilla is the biggest threat. While Dracula was the villain for the last season, here it takes a step back and let his war council decide for him. A weird choice of direction that I will talk in a moment, but now, let's know Carmilla is evil. She feels more of a threat than Dracula himself. Her schemings, her intentions, her instinct, her attitude towards everyone. She's a bad bitch, and she knows it. We have no other option but to stand. Hector's poor decision to simp over Carmilla, instead of staying with his bro Dracula, led to a rabbit hole of suffering that has no parallel. Too bad, since I really liked him. That's what happened when you follow the crazy scale. On the hero sides, season 1 was when we met them, but in reality, we really didn't know who these people actually were, until now. It's great seeing them interact with each other, and reflect about their past. But After all that blah 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 ends, we finally arrived to the castle invasion. And boys, it's everything that we hoped for. I terrify them, Cypher disorients them, Alucard goes over the top and we support him. Yes. Begin. The synergy between the show's rendition of Bloody Tears and the visuals in this action-packed scene is the only proof that this anime needs to prove its existence. God damn. This scene is incredible. The season has a lag on action scenes, but damn it, it doesn't matter because episode 7 exists. Alucard is fucking amazing, Trevor is fucking amazing, hell, even Saifa demonstrates that she's fucking amazing. She's my favorite now. And after all that ecstasy, we still have the final boss battle. The showdown that we were expecting, and it delivers. It has great choreography, it has rage in it, it is everything that the heroes were preparing for. <laughs> you must be the Belmont. And most importantly, it has sentiment in it. While Trevor and Saifa were trying to kill a demon overlord, Alucard is fighting his own father, his own past, his own existence. We might say, oh, Dracula, the whiny loser who spent the whole season in his chair doing absolutely nothing. No wait. Oh yeah, he's bad. Fuck, he's dangerous. Until we reach this specific room. Alucard's childhood room and everything stops. Reality strikes, time freezes, the adrenaline drains, and feeling starts to rise. It is tragically beautiful. My boy. I'm... I'm, I'm killing my boy. Please. I'm killing her boy. Dracula starts to realize that he's actually killing his own son, a sentiment that it will be beyond any parent's nightmares. It feels strangely a very human reaction, and Dracula knows it. In the end, all that had to be done was done. Dracula dies, and Alucard gets traumatized for life. 
Season 2 felt grander than 1 in every aspect. It's double the length, it had more personality, it had a bigger score, more critical moments, and an ending so good enough to end the whole series. With some foreshadowing for a possible future season, the final episode ends and us viewers got along wondering. It's done, right? No more Castlevania? Dracula died, so there's no reason for next season, right? And then season 3 came. Season 3 is the crisis season up to date. While season 1 and season 2 really feel like Castlevania, season 3 ups the antics to 1000%. It might have nothing to do with Dracula himself, but it goes into the consequences of the invasion and war against humanity. Trevor and Saifa goes in adventures reclaiming the land from the monsters that Dracula ordered in the last season. Alucard tries to live to his actions, but finds compassion and meaning from the foreign vampire hunters. We see new facets both for Isaac and Hector, one of a lost soul looking for revenge and the other a soul in torment, regretful of his actions and suffering for them. Not only that, but we have more characters introduced this season. The Vampire Sisters, among them Lenore, who is the best vampire ever, the Lindenfield people, Prior Sala, the Judge, a Jake in Simmons looking ass, and Count Saint Germain, the most interesting character of this fucking series. I know I said I want a series about Dracula's past. Fuck that idea. Give me a show about Saint the Man Germain. God damn, I love this guy. And all the little things that he mentions in his day to day. The season is also heavy on dialogue, but instead of a core drama like in season 2, it's more about philosophical discussions, mostly done by Isaac, who is looking for any reason for why not destroying humanity like Dracula wanted. In his journey, he talks with a lot of interesting people, things like the meaning of being human, why evil persists, but also why happiness is needed. We see Hector suffering the consequences of betraying Dracula, his distrust on everyone, and after finally finding someone who he can believe again, gets fucked over ten times fold. Also the rise of a new vampire empire due to the Council of Sisters perspective. That's why I like this season. It overexpands the Castlevania universe to riches that we couldn't even imagine. Of course, Castlevania is just about Dracula, the castle, and the monsters in it. But now that Dracula is dead, and the castle is empty, we now have the ever-expanding lore. The fusion between fiction and reality is incredible. We see how is vampirism in Japan, we have mentions of religions like Christianism, Muslims, Sufi, among others. And with Saint Germain, and the insanity that is the infinite corridor, we get little glimpses of other dimensions that sometimes didn't even felt like part of this show. Like come on, look at, look at this shit. Season 3 boosts up everything to show what is hell both in Earth and well, in, li in Little Hell. This shit is wild. This is the main reason why I wanted to do this video, to talk about all the incredible shit that happens in this show and that it's hidden in its third season, behind the death of its original antagonist and seemingly meaningless after the second season. But it's not. It's fucking badass. Hector crying like the little bitch that he is, Isaac traveling across multiple regions, meeting all new kind of people, and ending in a boss battle with a literal orb of mind control people, a new badass version of an old Castlevania boss. While Trevor and Saifa do some Scooby Doo shit almost the whole season, they get the better side of the action, and oh my god, <laughs> do I have to say, Saifa is fucking metal. This season is perfect, it is great in every aspect of its storytelling. The mystery investigation side of Trevor and Saifa, the redemption arc of Isaac, the lessons about humanity and survival of Alucard, the political drama of Carmilla and the sisters, and the suffering of Hector and the consequences of betrayal. It's perfect. The amount of creativity in this season alone is worth a complete different show. Like, how do you make a whole episode where half of the cast are fighting for their life and the other half are fucking, and make the adrenaline seamless? It's masterful. It's pure and unedited Kino. Watch this show now if you haven't. Now, to the final season. Season 4 is amazing. That's it. Season 4 of Castlevania is amazing.
It's everything I wish for the ending of this amazing anime. Unlike the other seasons, season 4 is full on action. Here the producers gave a Uno reverse card for this final part. Unlike the rest of the show, season 4 is 20% dialogue and 180% fucking non-stop action. And the shit that happens is incredible. The choreography, the direction, the music, the animation, it, it, it's actually insane. Season 4 made like season 3 was a normal day for Trevor and Saifa. Literally. I love the evil of the week kind of thing that the show was implying. Like yeah, Lindenfield was fucked up, but last week they were fighting a dead cold. And the week before that they were fighting a necromancer. It felt like a D&D kind of shit. And that's only for Belmont and Belnares. While Alucard didn't fought anything the last season. I don't mean it that way. Here now is like a white knight in armor, saving some villagers from a certain dead. The vampire sisters plot falling down due to the insanity of Garmila's plan. Also, we have an amazing daylight fight with vampire gods fighting some farmers. Hector finally being the amazing character that he was, getting back to his former self. And his dynamic with Lenore is actually really cute. And Isaac, transforming to his new persona, is admirable. I love Isaac. It's natural that after weeks of fighting hordes of people, Trevor and Saifa are beat down. But still, they kept going, doing hero shit and trying to help every human life from the monsters. Alucard finally finding meaning in helping anyone who needs said help. And look who is back, motherfucking Saint Germain. We get some of his backstory, how he met her lover, and what happened after season 3. Nice, he'll get reunited with... no. Oh no. Saint Germain is now the bad guy of the season. God damn it, fuck this. Now the season is an insane plan to resurrect Dracula, so he can find his lover in the infinite corridor. God damn. They did send your man deity. Not like this, man. Not like this. Friendship ended with Saint Germain. Now Hector is my best friend. Also, shout out to Isaac, who after teleporting to Carmilla's castle with a whole army, forgives Hector, who was already ready to die, by the way. He wanted his punishment. Anyways, forgives Hector and fucking 1v1 Carmilla till dead. Isaac is the main character. <laughs> what an amazing redemption. Isaac is the best man. Really, really happy with his ending. Anyways, with a fucking invasion to Alucard's castle and some side plot that it's not really important, Trevor, Saifa, and Alucard get back together. And they kick ass. Oh boy, they did. This part felt extremely Castlevania. Thank God for the penultimate episode of each season, because episode 9 of season 4 is pure adrenaline, bro. And it gets better. The final piece came together to really claim this is Castlevania. Death, a major character in the games, finally made his presence into the show as the one manipulating my poor man Saint Germain, who I hate now, by the way, as the actual antagonist of the season. With an amazing battle, and I mean a boss battle to end all the boss battles, with insane action, insane movements, insane feelings. Uh, I, I have literally no words to clarify how insane this battle is. We get to its climax, and with it, the end of the show. With a lot of feelings now found, and with a heart fulfilled with all the amazing things that happened this final season, except the character assassination of my boy Saint Germain, rest in peace. The Castlevania anime ends, and for once, I'm happy to say, this show is a masterpiece. Castlevania is among the best American anime that I have ever seen, and definitely is the best adaptation from a video game to a television series. Period. It's such an original show, with a lot of passion on it. It must have taken a lot of courage to express the amount of violence that is in the single anime. By that alone, it's an incredible project. But everything is fantastic. The voice is fantastic, the animation is fantastic, the soundtrack is fantastic. This anime is a true wild ride. Now that the show has ended, I'm optimistic for the future of the franchise. Before season 3 aired, producer of the show, Ari Shankar, mentioned how he's interested in having the rights to do a new season of Berserk. While he might not get that opportunity, Castlevania is the most Berserk show besides the 97 anime. Please don't talk about the new ones.
And by the announcements of a spin-off series after this last one, I know that these guys will do a vampire killer job. That's all for this video. If you like what you watch, please subscribe to the channel, give a like, and don't forget to leave a comment about your opinion on the show. I'm honestly interested in them. I can't be the only idiot who loved this anime. If you haven't seen the show, I hope I change your mind on it. This anime will be remembered as one of the best Netflix original productions. Bye bye.